The total destruction of Israel, something used by the Zionist lobby to bilk the US out of billions for years, is no longer a dream. It is inevitable. The only question is, when? With it, a limited world war may emerge with some surprises in store. It all started long ago, but we can focus back one year when Israel murdered nine Turkish citizens in an act of piracy, peace activists on an aid ship heading for Gaza. Aid ships heading for Gaza now get a military escort from the Turkish Navy and Turkey's president is heading for Gaza and Egypt right now to slap Israel down. A year ago, Israel and Turkey were the best of friends. Their spy agencies in the US shared nuclear secrets, sold them to China, North Korea, Pakistan, Brazil, worked as partners blackmailing half of Washington's army of corrupt officials and traitorous military officers. Patriotism in Washington is rare nowadays, considered stupid. Washington is all about globalism and no borders, about corporations, not America. To most in Washington, America is a joke, a bankrupt has-been nation, drowning in debt with a military now useless, spread across the globe, running errands for a cabal of international bankers. Until a week ago, the Turkish army believed it had control of Turkey, despite the elected government. Israel believed the same. They were wrong. A year ago, Israel believed Turkey would always be controlled because of their desire to join the European Union. Now that dream is considered hopeless. Who would want to join it anyway? The EU is broke, falling apart and toothless. Turkey, instead, is an economic powerhouse, outdistancing all but Germany in technology, productivity and science. Turkey also has a huge army a mobile army and a military tradition of relentlessness and, to be truthful, cruelty. Israel has been pointing that out of late, how Turkey wiped out the Armenians, much as Israel is wiping out the Palestinians. Problem is, Turkey's army is big, highly disciplined, capable of supporting military operations across the entire Middle East, allied with Iraq, Iran and Egypt, and considers Israel's killings of Turkish citizens last year as an act of war. This leaves only America or Israel's nuclear weapons to protect them. Problem? Page stooges in Washington talk about Israel's strategic importance to the US. That's a dream, much as the strength of Israel's army is a dream. There are two strategic allies in the Middle East, Egypt with their control of the Suez Canal and Turkey with their control of the Bosphorus, the only gateway to the Black Sea, something of immense value to the US. Turkey is also the gateway for oil from Central Asia and Northern Iraq. Another factor is Kurdistan. Israel has controlled the PKK, the communist terror group that has killed thousands in Turkey. Israel is threatening to unleash them again. In meeting with leaders in Iraq, however, I was told that Turkish military actions against the PKK, even inside Iraq, were welcomed. Kurds in Iraq hate the PKK and have long seen it as destructive. Northern Iraq is closely aligned with Turkey. Their economy is totally dependent on Turkey, much more than Baghdad. Hopes for a Kurdish nation are dependent on good relations with Turkey and those relations have improved continually for some time. One reality is the weakness of Egypt. The Mubarak government, including the military and intelligence services, worked closely with Israel, as did those of Turkey. It is Israel's goal to keep Egypt in line. However, with the killing of five Egyptian police and the protesters sacking the Israeli embassy in Cairo, that is coming into question. Israel still has considerable resources in place in Egypt, particularly we saw on August the 11th, 2011, when the Bush Bechtel envoy David Welch met with Israeli and Gaddafi representatives in Cairo at the Four Seasons Hotel, CIA and Egyptian spies in the room planning bribes to be paid to journalists and peace activists in a last-ditched attempt to save another Israeli ally, Gaddafi. Thus, Turkey will be doing 
a road trip to gain allies against Israel and to flank US backing, blackmailing the US. As Turkey has nearly all US nuclear secrets gotten through their spy partnership with AIPAC, something we were told of when I interviewed FBI informants within the Bush White House, they have things to trade. Turkey can turn out thermonuclear weapons quickly. Israel's counter is their partnership with India. India is building long-range ICBMs capable of carrying 10 warheads, also capable of reaching the United States. Israel has requested 10 of these missiles, giving them the capability of hitting the United States with 100 hydrogen bombs. This is not conjecture. This deal with India has been confirmed. The weapons are being built with US technology stolen by Israel and Turkey and Pakistan has spies working inside every aspect of the project. No secret to anyone. China is also aware and they believe they are a potential target of these Indian weapons. Thus, China is transferring advanced technologies, not only thermonuclear, but advanced aircraft designs and missile technology to Pakistan. In reality, from a military standpoint, India overshadows Pakistan by a mile. However, with the US in economic decline and dependent on China to buy US debt, betting against China and their close relationship to Pakistan is inadvisable. Pakistan represents China's foothold in Central Asia and their access to a port, Gwadar, in the Indian Ocean. China is dependent on oil from the region and sees the Indian Ocean as an area of strategic value. Pakistan is taking advantage of that. Russia is laughing themselves to death. They help set up America to fall in Afghanistan, payback for America's support of the Mujahideen and are enraged at the CIA and the US military for its role in flooding Russia with cheap heroin from Afghanistan. Heroin is destroying the social fabric of Russia nearly as much as drug profits that have infected the US political system have destabilized the US, left the Mexican border totally open and kept the US and Afghanistan as guardians of the largest opium den in the world. The changes we will see? Libya's new government is more than aware of Israel's interference on behalf of Gaddafi and will become a relentless enemy of Israel, despite false reports Israel has inserted into the fringe media. Egypt is in play. Things could go either way, depending on how meetings go this week with Turkey. With the UN vote on Gaza a given, the US will veto Palestinian statehood. Egypt and Turkey will be pushed together as US prestige in the region crashes. Israel's reaction under its repressive and reactionary Likudis regime under attack at home for economic failures, one after the other, will be to push for military action against Gaza. They may also wish to play in Lebanon, taking advantage of Syria's current weakness. This would be a mistake. Syria will not go down in flames like the Gaddafi regime. They are too vulnerable and will lose their place at the table, offset by Turkey, a nation that has an unpleasant history in the region lasting hundreds of years, a reputation Turkey is now trying to repair. This could also go either way. Israel still has nuclear weapons. Their nuclear advantage in the Middle East is now likely to make them a target. Turkey's army is more than a match for Israel, not even close. There is little expectation that Egypt will do more than posture as their military under Mubarak became a defensive force only infiltrated, as is Turkey's, with corrupt officers. What will happen? Israel, with all its planning, its involvement in 911, its very proven involvement in the 2003 invasion of Iraq and its machinations in not just Washington, but Cairo, Ankara, and other capitals across the region, is the big loser. Israel is now totally isolated and very much considered sacrificable by the US despite continual pronouncement by members of Congress otherwise. When Israel had to turn against the Democrats, despite the fact that 79% of American Jews support the Democratic Party and turn to the GOP and Christian Zionists for support, they bought friends they would never be able to trust.
For years, American conservatives were known to hate Jews, ban them from organizations, maintain no Jews allowed policies at resorts and ritzy neighborhoods, all under the euphemism of restricted. Red states were always no Jews or niggers allowed after sundown. This may not be taught in history books, but it is real history just the same, and the generation of American Jews that remember real anti-Semitism, not the phony Abe Foxman kind, know who their real friends are. 911 isn't all we lie about. Turkey, not Iran, will be forced to go nuclear. Turkey, however, is a long-time American ally, a charter member of NATO and, at heart, very pro-American, pro-Western and, as it were, sitting on the world's most strategic real estate. Turkey is also a relentless enemy, one Israel will be too stupid to apologize to, too stupid to make reparations to, and will depend on its nuclear arsenal and friends in the US for protection. Nobody will benefit from this, not the Palestinians, not Egypt, only those who wish to see Israel have their faces in the dirt. There is a problem with this. There was some hope that Israel itself might have a rebirth of democracy, with half a million demonstrators demanding the resignation of Netanyahu's ultra-nationalist government last week. There was a hope. The other big loser will be the United States. Pakistan will bring China into Central Asia. Turkey may well bring them into the Mediterranean or further. Whether Americans choose to recognize it or not, Bush murdered America's military future. Social cuts and job programs won't be enough. America will have to gut its military and withdraw from its bases around the world. That or economically die in less than five years. The only other way out is debt denial which requires full cooperation from China and Japan. In light of these issues, these problems, Israel, that small country that has so much control over the US government, will wake up one morning, a forgotten backwater in world affairs. Back in 1981, it looked like Israel would be a peaceful neighbor in a Middle East destined to move forward, maybe not to freely elected governments, but at least to no longer be a sideshow for the Cold War. There were lessons from 1981, when Jews visited Cairo as honored guests. 500,000 Israelis, homeless, underemployed, say they can no longer afford, even with the billions of dollars America is giving them, to try and run the world from a few acres of sand, now farmed by foreign workers. If Israel's extremist government continues its fear-mongering, helped along by APAC and the ADL in the United States, Israel will not survive. Israel will not die alone, not by a long shot. The problem is that there is no political leader in Israel or within the Zionist community in the United States that seems to care. The dream of world domination as some of us have always seen never left room for the survival of Israel or any other nation.